Welcome back to New Day Northwest. You've heard the phrase, you've worked hard for your money, so you should make it work hard for you. Well, best-selling author and financial journalist Nicole Lappin says growing your wealth through investing is key. This right here is her fourth book, Miss Independent, where Lappin focuses on helping women start investing, taking the mystery out of finance and inspiring them to take control. Well, I didn't come from money. I figured out how to make my own money and make it work for me in the school of hard knocks. And there are plenty of books about wealth and money out there, Amity. There isn't one, though, in plain English that breaks it down in the blocking and tackling step by step, in the same language that we're using now, or when we get drinks. I'm saying when because it will happen. Yes. Uh, and it doesn't talk down to you. And so, Here's the reality. We can't budget our way into wealth. We can't even save our way into wealth. And as high as your base salary might get, that's not even going to grow long-term wealth. The only thing that will is investing, utilizing this amazing force of compound interest that Einstein, as you know, calls the eighth wonder of the world. And that's because your money can literally make you even more money while you're sleeping. That's really amazing. But I know that there's a lot of fear surrounding this. There's a lot of fear when it comes to finance. So what are some of the big fears that you have heard about or learned or even actions that get in the way when it comes to women growing their wealth? I think jargon is the number one impediment. I think it sounds like a foreign language to a lot of people. It did to me. By the way, I grew up in an immigrant family, didn't study this stuff in school. None of us learn this in school anyway. If I were in charge of the world, that would be different. Yes. But it's just a language like anything else. We just don't have a Rosetta Stone for the language. So I wanted to create one. I mean, look, I mean, if you went to Japan and you didn't speak Japanese, you'd be really confused. If you went to Wall Street and you didn't speak the language of money, you'd be really confused and that's okay until you speak the language and then you can join the conversation. And so I think that's what really keeps a lot of folks out of getting their financial lives together and out of investing and out of growing their own wealth. The stories we tell ourselves can be fascinating, but they're all just stories and excuses we tell ourselves that we don't have enough money to start. Well, by the way, you don't need a lot of money. You just need a lot of time and you don't know math. Well, a fifth grader can do the math that's required to get your financial life together. It's all the humanities part. It's the mean girl inside our head, that enemy between our ears that's really standing in our way. I love that, the mean girl in our head. And I also love what you talked about. This is a language. And as we know, giving people language gives people power. So what's one easy thing people can do today to start on the road to financial independence? I think that you should negotiate all of your major bills. It's your hard earned money. You might as well fight for it. The beginning of the year is a great time to do that. You can call your major bill collectors, including your credit card company. Your credit card APR is negotiable. Just because it comes on a fancy piece of paper with letterhead doesn't mean it's set in stone. Mm -hmm. The worst thing they can say is no. And the answer, as you know, is always no if you don't ask. So I would say, Try to hit your credit card companies um, and get your APR down. Try to hit your housing if you're renting, talk to your landlord, uh, your cable, your phone bill, your car lease or note, and medical debt or insurance. I mean, you can often say that you're leaving to a competitor and many times they will throw you as a bone versus losing you as a customer because right. think about it, they'd rather take something than nothing at all. It is such a good point. I recently was about to leave my insurer because my car insurance, because it was just, there was a better deal. And they, to my shop, were like, oh, we'll do that. And I, I was like, no, oh, it's yes. such an important thing that you don't know. That's awesome. And then doesn't it become addicting? Didn't you want to call everybody and ask them for a better deal? I did just call my cable company and did the same thing. Yes. I love that. And that's just free money. That's money that you, you know, you worked really hard for Yes. Uh, and it's coming back to you. That's awesome. I love that. And I actually, I didn't feel guilty, but I know a lot of people might, but we shouldn't, right? We should be just proud of, of making this and not let this be intimidating, right? Absolutely. I mean, budgeting sucks, but so does being broke. In fact, I have been there um, and been on a brown rice and beans diet because it felt fancier than ramen. And I think that sucks more. So I think that it's really important to come to this from an empowering standpoint. Uh, you know, oftentimes you'll hear financial experts tell you to cut out the morning latte. I will not tell you uh, to do that. I think in life, in relationships, 
metrics, the little things matter and finances, the mm-hmm. big things matter. So it's really important to get those bills down, focus on making more money rather than nickel and diming yourself or clipping coupons and coming to it from a place of deprivation instead of aspiration. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm going to make so much money. I mean, here's hoping. But one of the other cool things about this book is she actually has QR codes in the book that will link you to balance worksheets. So you can kind of do that as well. Pretty, pretty nifty.